All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason. I'm the co-founder of Story Protocol. And today, I want to share with you a little bit about the programmable IP layer that we're building and how you can get involved with programmable IP. But before I talk about Story Protocol, I want to share more about the current situation that we're seeing in the content world. So theoretically, we should be living in a renaissance of on-chain contents with the advent of generative AI and the internet. Things should be going really well. For example, social media supercharging remixing, you're seeing billions and billions, of, billions and billions of remixes on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram. And this is a behavior that gives everyone global distribution straight from their living room. And as we all have seen, generative AI is supercharging this reality by turning not just everyone into a creator that has access to global distribution, but also allowing everyone to create with the full power of a Hollywood studio from your living room. And this is uh, from OpenAI's newest video model. You can tell it's extremely high fidelity. So what we have is this exponentially growing abundance of high quality content on the internet. It took AI only a year and a half to get to the amount of images produced that it took photography 150 years. And of course, if we go back to drawing, that's going to take 1,500 years. So we're really seeing this exponential curve in high quality content that anyone can create. However, there really is no golden age. Uh, you saw Hollywood had strikes for both writers and actors that lasted six months in the past year. And creators online are struggling to make a living by creating what, and doing what they love. Uh, and the reason why is, is not because of the speed or performance of these internet networks or even of generative AI. The real gating problem that we're seeing in content today has everything to do with IP attribution and monetization. So, We've seen lots of interesting experiments come out with generative AI. There's things like Drake and The Weeknd's, which was a remix that was created by someone in the living room. The actual Drake and the actual Weeknd had nothing to do with it. It reached number one on SoundCloud in a day. And on YouTube, you're seeing Harry Potter remix with Balenciaga, and these are getting tens of millions of views. And of course, JK Rowling was not behind this. So this is really interesting, but it's also a lose-lose situation. We're seeing the people who created these interesting remixes aren't able to actually generate or monetize off of these creations because they're violating on copyright. And of course, JK Rowling doesn't win anything either. So both the remixer and the original creator are losing out. And you're seeing this real tension come into play with the lawsuits. You're seeing OpenAI getting sued by the New York Times because OpenAI is regurgitating the content behind the paywall. Um, and there's many, many issues with Getty Images where the AI is actually reproducing their watermark. So this is really a new Napster moment because we have this brand new technology of generative AI that's supercharged by the global distribution of the internet, and we have no way to ensure that creators have their IP protected and no way to ensure that people can actually remix this safely and actually monetize off the back of their creativity. So what this is really leading to is, I think, a tragedy of the commons with AI. AI can continue getting better and better and training on more and more data. But at some point, if the people creating the data, the people creating the artwork, the music, whatever it is, they don't get compensated, there's no incentive for anyone to create. Uh, even Google would point, at least point people to web pages, and those web pages could monetize off that traffic. Now if you have OpenAI or any other LLM summarizing that information from the web pages, there's no traffic to those web pages. In, in years, they'll, be, they'll die out because there's no way for them to monetize. So this is a real tragedy the common situation that we're seeing where we don't have a good compensation model for AI, and, and this is only going to get worse as more and more people learn how to use these tools and as they grow ever more powerful. So to address this challenge, we feel like the internet needs a brand new IP infrastructure. Just like copyright laws were first invented after the advent of the Gutenberg press, which made replication extremely cheap, now we have to deal with a new challenge. AI is not just copying work. It's not replicating. It's actually generating entirely new content. So the idea of copyright is outdated. And we think that we need an internet-native programmable IP layer. So what Story Protocol is trying to do is to build this IP layer and to allow on-chain IPs uh, have programmable rights that their creators set that set the rules of engagement autonomously and that can be written upon and read by AIs and other programs. So what does this actually mean? What does this look like? At a high level, I think the best way to describe this is to first talk about DeFi because this is something that we're all familiar with. So the first wave of crypto was really focused on building an independent monetary system and introducing this idea of programmable money. With programmable money, you can take this dollar bill, this static piece of paper in your wallet, and actually move it on chain and tokenize it. And even though it may have the same dollar value, you may be able to buy the same amount of items with it, 
a USDC token or a USDT token can actually plug in to an entire decentralized ecosystem of apps. And this, this value can flow across these different programs permissionlessly. You can swap it on Uniswap. You can lend it on Compound. And no one has to orchestrate all of this. This is all due to the power of making money programmable. So we want to do the same thing for IP. There's no reason why IP should stay locked up in the pen and paper world of the traditional legal system that's inaccessible to creators and inaccessible even to studios. Uh, so we want to take these trapped IPs from the offline world and make them programmable by registering them on chain. Now you might ask, well, don't NFTs already do this? Well, I think NFTs are a great start. They validate digital ownership, and they serve as a source of provenance and attribution. But at the end of the day, NFTs are still static pointers to media files. So while they bring media and culture on chain, they don't actually make it programmable. For example, if I own an Azuki and my friend owns a Pudgy, and I want to create a comic book with both of our IPs, I have to go and read a complicated physical license, and I have to read the license for the Pudgy, and then probably have my legal team talk to their legal team or my lawyer talk to their lawyer in order to make that happen. And so there's still very much individual atoms. And we want to unlock programmable IP where each NFT actually has the ability to have royalties built in, set the rights for engagement for who can remix and create derivative works on that IP, and also allow people to permissionlessly generate real legally binding licenses off of that work. So we, just to dive into what this actually means on a tech level, uh, we've created essentially a different structure where each programmable IP has both nouns and verbs. The nouns are essentially the state of that IP, what makes that IP the IP. So that's the pointer to the media file. That's important metadata. And the way we implement this is through a token-bound account. So any existing NFT can attach a story protocol token-bound account to that NFT that represents a portal into all of our modules, which are the verbs. So you can see this is sort of what we call an IP asset, which are the nouns of the protocol. It stores the core metadata with the asset and also the specific data related to the licensing and other modules. And then once you have this IP asset registered on chain, and again, any NFT can become one, you have access to our entire world of modules that makes permissionless licensing, permissionless remixing, and royalty distribution possible with just a single click. Uh, and the final part that ties us all together is that we're not trying to build an alternative legal system. We've actually worked very carefully with lawyers to create something that we call the programmable IP license, or the PIL. And think about this like the YC safe of story protocol. So what we're doing is creating a very simple English, really human readable license that anyone can understand with specific parameters, like the upfront fee that someone needs to pay to use an IP, the recurring revenue, what regions the IP is active in. We've set all these terms in both the license and on Story Protocol. So what we have is a one-to-one -one mapping between the legal rights and the on-chain terms. So we can actually create this link between the legal system and what's happening on-chain. And you can see that we've created very simple UIs that any developer can plug into their app to make registration and setting these licensing terms and on-chain rights extremely simple. So the end vision is to build, just like DeFi built an entire parallel financial ecosystem, to build an entire parallel creative ecosystem where IP can transcend mediums, transcend apps, transcend platforms, and grow and expand in a way that it tracks across different apps. So you can have a creator tool, create an IP, register on Story Protocol. That can be shared on a different social media app. And then if that character blows up, it can actually become an AI model on a character AI style app. And this is all tracked on chain with Story Protocol. And I'll actually show you a live demo of how this works. So the end goal, really, is to create this web of IPs and to create the idea of networked IPs by making them programmable. So this is what Story Protocol is trying to do. And, and to make this a little bit less abstract, I want to go and do a live demo. So uh, bear with me. I heard the Wi-Fi is not super good, but fortune favors the bolts. This is what Matt Damon said famously two years ago in a brilliant crypto.com Super Bowl ad. So let's try this out. OK, so I want to start the journey here. This is an app called Magma which is a Web2 app with over a couple million users. So no, no one here knows anything about crypto. And we've actually abstracted away, as you'll see, a lot of the crypto uh, sort of wallets and all the gas fees. So anyone can use this. And I'll show you how to register this on Story Protocol and what that means. So this is a, obviously a preloaded image. I'm not an artist. I'm actually going to just ruin it a little by putting my own flair on it. There you go. So I, I added to this image. And now I'm ready to register this artwork on Story Protocol. And you can see that I can give it a name. I only have one hand right now, so I'm just going to type a couple letters. Um, let's call it hello. 
And now you can set the on-chain licensing terms. So we've actually simplified this. There's a lot more options. But um, there's a non-commercial option and a commercial option. And you can actually see the details for what this means if you're confused. So now we've set on-chain rights. And um, I'm going to write a description and then register it on Story Protocol. So now you can see it's registering on-chain. None of this involved any crypto-native UI. We've completely abstracted that away from the user. So this works for Web 2 and for Web 3. Now, most artwork is actually collaborative. So what I'm actually going to do is log in as a different user using a different browser and modify it with generative AI. So Magma is kind of like a Figma style UI, as you can tell. So all of this is based on collaborating and multiple people creating an IP. So this is a multiplayer game. I'm going to try out their generative AI feature. And I'm going to give a prompt to make this little fire guy a rainbow creature. And so this is going to take some time. But you can see that the generative AI is modifying this original image. Um, And almost there. All right, cool. So now it's all nice and rainbow. I will now accept this change. And again, this is a different user than the first one. So we're collaborating on this. And I'm going to register this as well onto Story Protocol. I can give it a name. Let's just call it Hello2. And I'm going to keep the same license as before, which was a non-commercial license. And I can actually edit the ownership share. So Jason was the first person, and I'm May now. So maybe May, May feels like. She deserves more shares, and Jason gets less shares because AI is cool. So now we've changed the ownership structure, and now we can register it again on chain. And I'll show you what this actual IP asset that's been registered looks like. It takes a while to load. So before I actually go to the output of this Magma registration, I'm going to show you very quickly another use case, which is Hey. So Hey is a front end, which is built on Lens. And Story Protocol has actually created an open actions using the permissionless Lens open actions uh, that they released that allows any post on Lens, whether it's on Hey or Orb, which is a mobile app that we've also integrated with, or really any other Lens client, to register any artwork or post as an IP asset on Story Protocol. So let's actually go through that right now. What's happening? So I'm going to create a new post. Hello, Denver. And I'm going to attach an image because I want to show my artwork to the world. I'm going to put this cool Buffacorn image. And before posting, I'm going to click on this Open Actions button. And what I'm going to do is register this as an intellectual property via Story Protocol. As you can see, it's extremely simple. There is no complicated legal text here. And I'm just going to name the post, um, type in myself as the author. And actually, I can select between these two preset flavors of licenses. So let's say I want this to be commercialized, and I want to actually earn money for this on Lens. So I'm going to save these settings, and I'm going to post this on Hey. So this is going to take maybe a few moments. I'm going to refresh. OK. Let's see. All right, there we go. So that's loaded. And you can see, unlike a regular post, there's actually a little copyright logo here that shows that this is intellectual property. So anyone viewing this post can look at the terms set on Story Protocol and actually view it on our dashboard. Uh, so that's how it works on Hey. Now I'm going to go back to Magma. The licensing term should now be available on our dashboard. So I'm going to click View on Story Protocol. And you can see here that we've built a custom dashboard, almost like an ether hand for Story Protocol. Here you can see this crappy smiley face that I made, as well as the AI-generated rainbow creature. And you can see the revenue split is 25% and 75% as we had set. And you can even see that this is AI-assisted. So another use case of Story Protocol is tracking what has and hasn't touched AI. And this is all registered on chain. So, uh, oh, and also at the bottom, you can see the license that this has been attached with. So why is this interesting? This is interesting because once you've registered programmable IP from any single app on Story Protocol, it's now in a universal IP database that any other app can pull from. So while we haven't built it into this demo, you can imagine that I take this rainbow fire creature that I've registered on Magma, someone else discovers it, and they really love it. And because this is a social remixing non-commercial license, they can actually make a post with the fire creature on Hey, and maybe People love it on, hey, it blows up on the social media platform. You can plug it into maybe even an AI chatbot. So another, uh, another partner that we've integrated with is MyShell, which is like a character AI style conversational agent app. You can imagine that that fire creature, because it's stored on re uh, registered on Story Protocol, actually gets licensed into a MyShell AI character where you can actually talk to this fire creature. And these models themselves, the AI models themselves, are registered on chain. So if I click on this, um, I'm just preloaded it, but you can see that this is actually a transaction uh, where each of these individual models are themselves registered as AIs or as IPs on Story Protocol. 
So like I said, this is creating a network of IPs that can transcend individual apps, transcend mediums, and transcend platforms. Now, the last thing I want to show is to go back to the Explorer for Magma. And you can see here the source. So I can actually go back to the original app where this IP was registered, which is Magma. And I have a view-only frame of my Magma artwork. Let's say this is a third person, right? Let's say one of you wants to remix this. You can actually click the Remix button and build your own addition onto this IP, creating this IP graph and creating a chain of derivatives that are all logged on Story Protocol. So what does that actually look like? Well, we've created yet another integration with Farcaster Frames called Artcast that allows anyone to take an AI image and add their own prompt and evolve the image in this kind of social AI remixing experiment. So this is live on Farcaster now. I just picked out a cool example of a really long Artcast chain that started off with a dog, uh, like a Shiba, and then got remixed many, 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 many times by many different people and ended up in this cute little dog with hat. So I just want to show you what this looks like. We actually tracked the IP graph of all of these remixes. So you can see here at the very bottom that we are currently on this green node. That's the very tail end of a long chain of remixes. But uh, the, blue, the blue node is a root. So that was the original image that led to all of these remixes. And you can see people have forked it at different points, remixed that IP, all the way to create this complex IP graph that ended up in this cute little dog. And so. While this is just limited, all, that IP graph that you saw is just limited to Farcaster in that one app, the vision is much broader. As I, as I mentioned, this can span across apps. So in, imagine an IP graph that looks exactly like the one you saw, where each node is an artwork or an IP registered from a different app, and it's flowing across these platforms and across these apps in a complex ecosystem. That's the real vision of what we're trying to do at Story Protocol and what we're building the programmable IP layer for. Um, so just to go back to the slide deck. So just takeaways, because I know you guys are all builders here, uh, just talking about our protocol design. At a high level, some technical takeaways from how we design our protocol. The first is that we really wanted every NFT project to be able to use Story Protocol. And we know that there's already a lot of interesting IP on chain. So we use token-bound accounts such that any existing NFT could get a token-bound account, a smart contract wallet attached to it, and become a part of Story Protocol. So really, all registration means on Story Protocol is getting a special Story Protocol token-bound account that acts as a portal to all the functionality that I just talked about. The second is that we have a modular architecture. So uh, just to go back a few slides, this modular architecture means that all of our states, uh, and this is the change we're making now, but all of our state is going to be stored in the nouns, the core IP asset. But then all of the functionality are in these stateless modules. So what that allows us to do is we actually want third-party developers, people like you, to build brand new modules on Story Protocol that can actually build new functionalities into IP. And you can, as a model creator, monetize your modules and actually earn revenue from building modules that people are using. Um, the benefit of this is also that we have highly upgradable modules because all the state is stored in the IP asset. If you want to make changes to your module, it's very easy. You just add a new module and plug into the existing state on chain. OK, and then lastly, the whole point of this vision is to make IP programmable. So as I mentioned, we've worked very carefully with the legal team lawyers to create a license that is one-to-one -one between off-chain legal contract and on-chain enforceable rights. And so we wanted to make IP programmable. Um, a difficulty that we've had in our protocol, and you know, this is completely open access to anyone. So if you are contributing, we would love for you to be a part of this. Uh, access control has been a little bit of a pain for us, so if you, you want to take a look at our code and help us out there, we'd appreciate uh, your feedback. Okay, so just to conclude, I only have a minute left. I just wanted to share some of the ways that you can get involved. The first is that here at East Denver, we have a lot of different bounties for building either on top of the core protocol or integrating an existing app with Story Protocol or even building a brand new business on top of the programmable IP layer. So please come reach out to us. We're, uh, we're at table E5 right now, so like right behind the speaker booth. Uh, we also have a grant system that's going to last beyond ETH Denver. So if you're interested in a strong partnership with us, and if you're interested in being one of the first launch partners on the protocol when we launch on mainnet sometime this summer, please apply to our builder grants. We want to work with you, uh, and we have a very strong ecosystem team that's meant to support all the projects on Story Protocol. Lastly, uh, a couple other things on socials. We have a very, very active Discord. Come and create programmable IP memes on our Discord and ask questions if you're a developer. Uh, also, all of our developers are here. So if you want to schedule a time to meet up, Discord is the best place to do that. And then lastly, if you are interested, please follow our Twitter. And you can also reach me there at Jason J. Zhao. 
So hopefully that was interesting, learning about the programmable IP layer. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you.